Yeah, this is Vince Scorpion here at the Scorpion Den. Uh, just uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna try to do something different this week. We're just gonna just stop bullshit. We will be talking about wrestling, anything that we have to talk about. I'm here with Holden Orr from Vision of the Geek. What's up, man? Hey, Vinny. Looks good. Yeah, fucking. Uh, we had a pretty good weekend this past weekend, huh? Yeah, man. With uh, chaotic wrestling, had that thing last Friday. It was a really good show. Yeah. No, it was actually. It was. It was really good. It was much better than the one that we went to at McCoy. Oh, for big time wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just. It just. It just wasn't like they were into it as much as these guys were. Yeah. Well, I think it was also that like. It was easier for us to be into it because we actually had ringside seats. <laughs> yeah, it always helps when you're not when you're not to get up and like how the last time we were there, I had, I had to I was pissing those people off like almost every every time I had to get up and take a piss or have a cigarette. Yeah, and then it turned out we weren't even in the right seats. Everybody in that section ended up moving over to like one one row over to the other side. <laughs> well, that was that was for chaotic. I'm talking about big time. We're at McCoy Stadium. And I, when um, every time I had to get up, we were sitting in like the main general admission seats instead of being down there. Yeah, I looked out. I was between you and your buddy because he kept getting up too. I didn't really have to go anywhere. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was like, nice. Just chilling. Yeah, just chilling, man. And it was it was a interesting day. It was hot as shit though. I was I was sweating my balls off at that at that event. I was I looked like I was fucking. I just ran like three three miles in a PT and I was on Romeo PT like one of those fat kids you know I was wondering if they were going to even cancel it it was so humid but like in the distance you had like black thunder clouds with like lightning gl- clearly going on inside them that would be cool if the Undertaker showed up that day yeah the, the place would have lost its mind they wouldn't know what to do and like yeah you guys didn't even buy tickets motherfucker guess who show up fucking me Mark Callis or I mean uh Mark Calloway I mean uh Undertaker <laughs> At least he didn't have as many gimmicks as uh. Well, he actually he got lucky because like. The the one the Undertaker one really took off and it like really just. It just stayed. Uh, it's kind of one of those mainstays. I can't think of really too many people whose gimmick like. Was was as consistent for as long. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, he went through his biker phase, but like. <clears throat> That wasn't all that long. I guess I was just trying to take off because when he was the Undertaker, even in his younger days, he was like flying around the ring doing this like phenomenal shit, you know, walking on the top rope, you know, doing the you know that aerial clothesline that he usually does, and I guess being the Undertaker, like the Dead Man character, was um, putting a little lot of pressure on his hips and yeah. all that kind well, of they, stuff. Yeah, they kept killing him off. <clears throat> the Undertaker kept dying. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't how know can, how many times the Undertaker has died. He's fucking Jason. That's who he is. He just comes back as Jason or Michael Myers. Yeah, no, I guess it's. Uh, I guess he embraced time off. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. Always like I don't ever remember him having like a really bad injury where it kept him out because he pre they pretty much kept that shit under wraps. Because I never really I, I've, you've heard of like there would be like storylines where like when Brock Lesnar broke his hand and he had to wear a cast and all that kind of stuff and he he had that big evil. American badass gimmick going for a while, like when he came back as under, like that's when I remember he left as the Undertaker. He was still under like the Lord of Darkness type of a gimmick with a Big Show. He was a tag team champion with Big Show. Then something happened when he left, and he came back after like so many months. And then like just when the the corporation was like at this at this at its height, and um, he came back. All of a sudden, you have like the two. Anytime you see a video with two little girls like creepy girls it always fucking freaks me out like you hear kids laughing and shit but he had the two girls saying like he's here and all that stuff and he comes out to fucking American Badass by Kid Rock well I remember the big reveal to find out the master of darkness was actually Vince McMahon (laughs) that was so fucked the fucking what they call it the corporate ministry yeah after a while they combined forces for a while and then they go oh yeah yeah and then like Ken Shamrock was just like hey what about me (laughs) He's the only one wearing not black. He's only yeah, wearing Mick, blue. Was it Mick Foley, Test, Ken Shamrock, D'Lo well, Brown, and yeah. Well, well, no, they called themselves the Union, right? Yeah, for some weird thing. Uh, it's like, yeah, fucking, um, well, I remember, like, Big Boss Man was part of the corporation when he came back not wearing, like, he was wearing that SWAT outfit. Then you had, like, guys like um, Viscera. Yeah, he's a great heel. 
But boss man? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, Hisra, then they had the brood, which was at the time like like young Christian and Edge and Gangrel. <clears throat> Look at him. That was cool to meet him at uh big time. I like the brood. I like the the way they do it. It's like almost like if you're a fan of the Lost Boys, you're gonna like the brood. You know. Yeah, well, they'd always, like, people would lose their shit because, like, the lights would go out and then they'd wake up and they'd be covered in blood. Oh, yeah, when they did the bloodbath. That was fucking, <laughs> that was cool. I, I think, I forgot who they did it to. But they it did it to, like, everybody on the roster. And then they one. did it to, like, Ken Shamrock. And, he and then he looked like off. a madman. <laughs> he had the carry shit going for yeah, him. Yeah, you got Christian in the, you got Christian in, that's, that's how the brood got kicked out. And then I think shortly after they started their feud, their long feud with the Hardy Boys. Yeah, and that was that was awesome. And like, and then when the Brood, um, like at first I think it was yeah, it was Michael P. S. Hayes had um, um, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. They were playing that little role where they were playing that like, little gothic thing. Then they, then for some reason, Edge and Christian got the boot out of the Brood, and then yeah, Matt they handed and Jeff their Hardy. ass to him too. Yeah. And Matt and Jeff Hardy ended up being part of, like, the, the second brood, kind of, right? Well, yeah. no. It was weird, because, like, they, they really pushed a, a couple tag teams really hard out the gate. Um, it was Too Cool, the Hardy Boys, and then Edge and Christian. Like, like the three of them became, like, I don't know, the the tag team division got real serious. <clears throat> and that was one as good. And then years. a time shortly after, the Dudley Boys arrived. You know, they, I remember, did you remember the first ever uh, TLC, it wasn't called a TLC match at the time, it was just like, a, it was a ladder match for the Tag Team Championship, and I believe it was like, a, I think it was at SummerSlam 2000, <clears throat> and that's when they first kind of, I believe they introduced the TLC, and then and then the next one made it to call TLC 2, where they had the Dudley Boys, Jeff Hardy, uh, the Hardy Boys, uh, did I ever say the Hardy Boys? And then um, Edge and Christian, and Edge and Christian somehow always won that match. I remember they had the. You remember when fucking uh, Jeff Hardy was hanging off? It was at WrestleMania 17. He's hanging off the top of the thing. Edge climbs up the damn the ladder. Like it's know. like 15 feet high. Those guys had some. He really speared him things. off that shit. And then you see fucking Edge do that little, like, holy. He's like, oh. Like. Those guys had some of the best tag matches of the era. Oh, hell yeah. It's, it was so cool to watch that kind of. Um, that type of energy. And wrestling is like now it's like so fast paced. I remember before you had matches that like that took forever. Oh god! And they'd always start out slow. Yeah. They feel each other out and do some technical stuff that kind of resembles the amateur style. Yeah. Doing a Greco Roman knuckle lock. <laughs> then the next thing you know, they're poking eyes, like Scratching doing back. doing chest chacks. Yeah, yeah, chest chops and like the, the, well, constant like, like weird down holds and stuff like that. I'm like, come on, how long yeah. are you be in a fucking damn headlock, dude? Or the abdominal stretch. You don't see that done too many times. Yeah, but then usually after the first seven minutes of them doing this stuff, the match, like, gets insane. And they usually turn in, like, 20-minute Iron Man matches. Well, then they have, like, what they used to call back in the day a pair six brawl. Yeah. <laughs> and then what other kind of matches are there while we're talking about it? Uh, there's the kind where, like, the monster heel just comes out and just crushes, uh, like... Like uh, a guy who's just out there just to lose. Oh, what are they? They call him. Uh, I believe they, the the term. Well, the name is Jobber, but they, they just have a they have a technical term for like a like a like a developmental wrestler or something like that. Or just like what you go over. out and then you do, and it's called like a work, right? Yeah, it's either work or a squash squash match or whatever you want to call it. They, these days, I believe that I believe that all the uh, the freaking the analogy is the same. Uh, but it's like you had guys like Barry Howitz, Terry Taylor for a little while, but um, no, no, I'm sorry, not Terry Taylor. Like the Brooklyn, like Steve Lombardi for a while, then became like the Brooklyn Brawler. They have Iron Mike Sharp. All these guys were kind of like good heels, but they were like good heel jobbers just to make the guys look good. You're just like, oh, he's going to get his ass kicked today. Or you see a guy like, they, they're doing it now, which is cool. They're bringing it back because you, you have these guys that are getting like, going against like, you know, Braun Strowman. That guy's a fucking monster, that dude. And I was like, holy crap. Yeah, I think they're just trying to hype him up right now. You know how, yeah. like, when someone first comes in, they just kind of feed him guys? Mm -hmm. And then they have, like, overwhelming wins. And they're like, oh, well, now he's a superstar. Now he can face another superstar. It was, like, one of those things, like, man, what if what if this guy went against this dude? Yeah. And it's, like, when, like, when... It didn't happen, to, like, with The Undertaker, too. He's, like, he just come off, boom. 
right off the bat, he was already like, holy shit. Out at the gate, he was already prime time. Yeah, because yeah. he, he, when he when he uh, made his debut um, at Survivor Series, which was like, now it's like, well, almost like 25 years ago, a little bit, probably longer than that now, 26 years ago, because it was like 1990 when he debuted in that, and when he had Brother Love. But he just, his first victim was Coco Beware, fucking tombstone through the fucking mat. Then then just threw him out like trash. He's like, get out of the ring. Then the next one he got was like, I believe it was Nightheart. And he went after Dusty Rhodes pretty hard too. Because it was, it was like the, the dream team against the million dollar team, or whatever they had. I think it was the million dollar team. Because DiBiase was the one that pretty much introduced him. It's like, now from Death Valley. And, uh, but it's like his. He came out the gate, and then you have to see him on going on superstars, you know, getting these, you know, developmental talents. Well, people are definitely paying way more dues now. Like, everyone is being made to pay dues before they finally make it. And they're making it with that, and it's like, you see these guys going to indies and stuff like that. They, 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 they were rather in the indies type of uh, environment. And then when you sign with WWE, it doesn't matter how long you've been wrestling, they're going to put you in NXT because they want you to learn how they do things. And now it's like NXT, they have the performance center too. They teach people how to do, they have classes how to do promos, um, how to look at the camera, how to develop your character, all that stuff. And they, they build them up. It's like homegrown talent. Like now, like in the minor leagues of baseball, they have their homegrown talent. Like freaking like, you know, the Red Sox, even for a while, the Yankees system actually had a great farm system. They just had this great talent coming up and like, oh shit, like, like Jeter. He was one of those guys that would. You know, fucking, he was. He just stayed loyal to the team. Not many people do that these days. Well, I mean, yeah, it also doesn't hurt that the New York Yankees have like the ability to have the highest payroll in baseball every year. But yet they can't still win the big one anymore. <laughs> well, they lost the magic, man. Like George Steinbrenner himself was probably one of the most important figures with the New York Yankees because he he was motivated to win all the time. Like I I don't know if they just they they need to. Refresh the clubhouse because they also had uh, a, the manager Joe Joe Torre was a great manager. Oh yeah, and then on top of that, he got uh, yeah highest payroll. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Sure, I'll stay here <laughs> at the team that can pay me the most money anyway. And then what team did he go to afterwards? He when... didn't. He stayed with one team for his entire career. No, Tory. He he ended up managing for another team. Oh they, no, he uh, um he had like a year off, and then he went and he managed uh, the Dodgers for a little while. And yeah, the Dodgers to me has always been like the Red Sox of the West Coast. They kind of feel like it, right? Yeah. Well, they like well, their issue is they can't even get out of the first round. <laughs> they can't like they got the best pitching in baseball and they can't get out of like the first round it's like every single year they're spending all this money on players I've never even heard of uh, I and know. yeah it's just uh, yeah it's futility I mean it's not like they're not spending like, yeah. they live in a huge market so like they have the cash to spend they just they just don't know how to spend it but when I we mean, had the meet and greet at Lowell um, oh yeah, we have to meet and greet at Lowe's. So, sorry, like I'm not gonna apologize for this because this is the, one of those types of episodes where we're just gonna be talking about anything but everything. Yep. Um, yeah, we're gonna we don't bounce around. we don't give a fuck. Yeah, you but, don't. Um, this is yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. But it's like, um, like you know, you got to meet Rob Van Dam. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was an awesome thing. It's like, what did like, what did you say to him when you uh, when you approached him? Um. Hey, man, I don't know. I was just like, I just said hi. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then he, uh, and then he was, uh, he was signing my, my shit, and he's like almost a world-famous stoner, so I'm like, it's always 420. And he's like, you want me to write that? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so he did. And yeah, it's sitting in my kitchen. I need to find a frame for it. Oh, fuck yeah, man. If I can, uh... uh like my my main my main mission going there was like I always like to do the meet and greets too. I, I love the show, but it's just like just to be able to meet the people that you've been watching on TV all these years. Especially when I was watching Rob Van Dam in his ECW days, he was coming out with like Francine. I remember when when it, um, ECW first showed up on TNN, and then they just started showing all this content that they've been creating over the years. And they kept showing all these Rob Van Dam matches with Jerry Lynn, and they were some of the most insane hardcore things I've ever seen. Those guys, Jerry Lynn too, was such an awesome world. I don't know. I think he's retired now. 
Yeah, I think he was all used up by the time WWE bought everybody out and he made it. And he went to TNA for a while. He was he was like one of the very first ones to go in there. That's when they had they were still like part of the NWA type yeah. thing. It was they kind of were you know, the national. They even had the National Wrestle Alliance championship for them for a while. Yeah, well, it was just everyone got tired of doing the hardcore stuff. That guy was hardcore, like crazy, but he'd lose every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I don't think he won one match I saw with him and Rob Van Dam. I, I, yeah, he, it was hard for him to face him because I think, like, RBD, he was the TV champion. Oh, uh, yeah, and he yeah. held it forever, and it was just his. And, like, uh, and it just, like, you'd be watching this, and you just know, you're like, you, you're just, you're like, whoa, you'd see something for, like, the first time, like, like uh, Rob Van Dam, like put a chair and gun somebody's face, and then he from the other turnbuckle jump all the way across, and then oh the Van and then, Terminator, yeah, and then <laughs> drop kick in his face. He did the Van Daminator there, and when we we're at Lowell, um, like it was it was exciting to meet him. Like it was like would you get like it's like I know with me in my element, I'm like I'm meeting these guys. Oh yeah, girls, dude, you're, I'm like you're starstruck. You you're know? starstruck. Is yeah, it? no, it's it's cool. I never know what to say because like. I don't know. I really don't give a shit what, like, it's not that I don't completely give a shit about other people. It's just yeah. that, like, hey, cool, like, I'm a fan of your work. And then, awesome. And yeah. So the first person I had to meet, you know, of course, been her and I have been friends on Twitter for a while, and I had to meet Thea Trinidad. That was actually cool. Yeah, it was a big deal. I remember. I, I, was the, I was the cameraman for that. I took all those pictures. Yeah, that was cool. And, uh, so I went up to her. People want to know, they like, what would you say? It was like, I went up to her and I was like, hey, I hate the air. It's, uh, you recognize me? And she's only saw a picture of me once when I did one of those celeb VMs. You can, uh, if people don't know what celeb VMs are, they're, uh, you can contact a, pretty much any wrestler that's on there or a celebrity and you can have, like, send a video to you giving you a shout or whatever. But anyway, then I announced myself as Scorpion Marine because that's my Twitter handle. Yeah, that's a plug. Remember it. And, uh, and then I met her, and I was talking to her in Austin for a while. Austin Aries, he's a great worker too. Um, you gotta admit, the guy is good at what he does. He plays, he sells shit so good. You know, he's very smooth and analytical, and he plus he's very technically sound too. Yeah, that was a, my first time ever seeing him. I've heard the name, but like I never actually seen the guy, mm -hmm. or let alone see like what his ring work looks like. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was good. It was a hell of a match. Then I'm then I'm an RVD after that. You know, and then I, I told I told him my 420 on the way up there. He's like, "Cool, I'm supposed to stick in his brain." But it was like you had the whole story going on when I'm doing the picture and shit like that. First, I have the first I have the last autographs in my hand, and then I was like, "Hey, man, you want to put that down?" And you actually <laughs> I should put captions. Hey, man, you want to put that? Down? Oh yeah, fuck me, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like for the like, here's a little tip from the Holden Orm School of Photography. When you have the smartphone in your hand, it just kind of keeps slapping your thumb against the picture button. <laughs> While they're there, and then wait for them, because they they think that you're just gonna take one picture. Yeah, that's wrong. You you just slap it once, and it takes the picture so fast. So like, you can get off like a good fifteen slaps, and then just act like you're trying to line up the picture nice, and then you get like fifteen pictures to play with. <laughs> like, hey, good, and just fucking like spam the fucking picture button. We well, have to because like you, you there's a there's a chance that some of them like people might have their eyes shut and yeah. they're yawning or something. You fart. Yeah, that's oh, not gonna that, show up on you have camera. That, you have that. You have that lady behind me. You know, photo bombing my shit. You know, because she was on Maybe, her phone. Maybe dude, that, that's uh, that's what happened in my Rob Van Dam picture. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, I got my arm all held out awkwardly into the randomness, <laughs> and then there's this like random woman off to the like the left, probably playing Pokemon Go, and she's she, not going anywhere. She's just standing there. I think she might have been one of the. Yeah, she's one of the staff members. Oh, staff members. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't know if she was actually like one of the women. Who she wasn't one of the time, but the one that was standing that, that actually was like the ring assistant or something like that. She was actually I didn't realize it, who she was. She was like, hey. How you guys doing today? I'm like, good. Yeah. Just get out of my way so I can meet fucking Rob, dude. I don't care about you. It's always cool hiding underneath the bleachers of this uh, stadium that I can't pronounce. Uh, oh. It's it's French. Everything about Lowell is French. Yeah, just like Lunenburg is old Germany. Yeah. And down here, I don't know what Torrent has. Mixed breeds. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Well, back in the day when like the East Coast was settled in segregated neighborhoods, <laughs> and neighborhoods were so important. Southie was always, Boston was always Irish. and Man, talk to anybody over 50. They're going to tell you how important things and how it's so sad that the old neighborhood isn't the same. 
That happens a lot. <laughs> what they call that urban blight by Mark Twain or some shit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. But then right there, sitting next to him, because I thought we always had to buy tickets just to meet every single wrestler. I'm like, I'm just going to fucking pay. And they'd say, oh, you may have to pay more. No, I'm not. I'm paying no, the same yeah, fucking we, amount, asshole. What was it? Yeah, we had to have, like... A certain ticket just got there earlier. They made us buy an autograph and a picture from... Well, actually, you had to buy one or the other in order to get down there. And then there yeah. were, like, the local guys who you could just hit up, like, down there if you had cash. Yeah. And I usually bring enough money with me, so I'm, I'm going there to spend. I'm like a fucking gambler. I'll just bring a stack. But then I saw Cody Rhodes. Yeah, yeah. Then you got and, his, too. And it was good to see Cody Rhodes, because I didn't see Cody Rhodes in person since he left the WWE. You know, when he got released or whatever he asked for his release, because you know, I don't, I, I didn't talk to him too much. And I was like, "Hey, Cody, you know, I'm, I see what you do, and I'm, it sucks that you're not in the WWE anymore." He was like, "Well, I just appreciate your fans like you coming down, and you know." I don't think he's going to be out for much longer. He's going to end up back in some capacity. He might end up with an NXT contract, for all we know. No, he he's too far developed to be go put down NXT. I would, I would take it as a. Slams at a face because he's always been part of the WWE brand. Well, know? yeah, it's true, except for the fact that what if his job's actually developing talent? But at the, t- the same time, because AJ, wrestles... Styles, AJ Styles didn't have to go to um, NXT. No, but he's also <clears throat> a relatively young talent. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying different path. They're probably gonna yeah. end up bringing him back to the main roster eventually. He should go to Japan. He That's... just needs to re- like re he reimagine his gimmick. Well, he should. He didn't want to be a gimmick anymore. He just wants to be Cody Rhodes, and that's what. She should be. He shouldn't be like Stardust or anything like that. Well, yeah, you think they'd freaking treat a legacy like him like uh, a little better? Mm-hmm. But I mean, they—they the whole family's kind of been made to do work like the entire time. Mm-hmm. I think the only one who's ever really a champion was their dad, and well, he was a world champion. Um, and then Goldust in his early years, he was uh, Intercontinental, Intercontinental, and that's Intercontinental and tag numerous tag team champions, championships. Uh, and uh, even when he was in WCW, I believe he was for a short time the television champion, really? or the United States champion, one of those two. Yeah, uh, he wasn't somebody. Gold Dust there; he was just himself. Yeah, he was so, just Dustin. That's a weird, 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 weird. Yeah. And then they threw on that gimmick. I mean, when when Dustin Rhodes went back to WCW, he was coming out as this person. He kind of looked; he was floating around there, trying to give him like an Undertaker type personality, but he looked like Uncle Fester because mm-hmm. he had white face and dark eyes, and he was floating. And he looked like one of those like creepy ass like preachers just stealing like Silent Hill, you know. That was just floating around. Like, but it was cool to meet him. <clears throat> he actually asked, asked me if I was okay because I was sweating balls. He's like, "You're okay." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just overweight and sweating, dude. I'm all good." <laughs> then Tommy Dreamer, I met him. He was cool to talk to because I had him. Uh, I saw the one photos he had. And what about that? Those that fucking same motherfucker that kept on cutting me in line. Every fucking time, like, dude, you don't see me standing here, dude? You think you're an ad? F- I was like, what the fuck? I was going to say, listen here, you fucking ginger fuck. Yeah, the ginger kid, it looks like he had a health problem. Yeah, he looked like he got shot and stabbed by people, and or fucking cigars put out by his fucking, you know his father wasn't pleased to be there. You can see a look in his face. <laughs> it was weird. It was, his dad was just like, I got to make up for being a terrible dad for the whole year. I'm going to buy my son all this stuff. So the kid had like a, a replica TV championship belt on top like, of like 20 action figures he was carrying around in these bags. And I'm sitting there and the fucking dude's like, yeah, you're next. I'm like, dude, you have like a fuck out. Are you 10 second Tom? You don't remember you just fucking talk to me, dude? And if people don't know what 10 second Tom, 10 second Tom is, he's from fucking, from 51st Dates. You know, the Adam Sandler movie where he fucking, when Drew Barrymore had that, you know. Short time memory lapse bullshit. That's actually one Adam Sandler movie I haven't seen. Oh, that's pretty good. It's on Netflix. Yes, there's a few of them I haven't seen. And, uh, but Time of Dream was cool to talk to, but I had to, I had to vent in that thing because I that's kind of fucked up. If you at fuck like a Comic Con, you cut in line with somebody, you're gonna get beat up by a fucking dude dressed as Yoda and Obi Wan and Darth Vader and probably like fucking Goku. No, they usually <laughs> just passive aggressive. Like, I'll, I'll fucking score. I should have scorpion death dropped him right there. What, you know how to do that? Yeah, just grab him by the fucking thing. Not, like, I'll do it real, though, make sure his head hit the ground. It was, like, well, it was like a reverse <laughs> DDT. Or yeah, it's Sting used it for a while. But me and Tommy Dream, I had him like sign that um, the autograph that had the big baseball bat with the barbed wire. And I was like, yo, man, can you write Fuck Lucille on there? And then, like, for The Walking Dead, and he says, it's funny you mentioned Walking Dead. I'm like, that guy, I'm like, who, Negan? 
He's like, no, um, like the guy ripped. Did he sign it himself? All I remember seeing is that he wrote "fuck Lucille" on. Yeah, the- he wrote "fuck Lucille" and he signed Tommy Dreamer. I guess Tommy Dreamer's kind of like one of those guys. I don't want to speak for him, but he doesn't like. He, he, I think he looked kind of uncomfortable when I said write "fuck Lucille." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but he wrote it and then he started telling me about like, like the ECW bats I'm like you put it up to like if I was like Mick Foley or something like that and I'd go on oh, there I've and seen, see Negan and I've like seen, yeah that's cute you know I've seen numerous memes <laughs> that resembled exactly that <laughs> but he was cool he was like yeah I'm more like Rick I'll put in, I'm a normal guy like, I'll put in, in extreme situations and now I came and I evolved into this you know innovator of violence I'm like yeah you I remember you taking that fucking kendo stick from Tommy Dreamer and kept on saying, thank you, sir, may I have another. And it was when Woman, you remember Woman? Um, it was Nancy Benoit, Chris Benoit's wife, well, late wife. She was always a valet. She valeted for Sandman for the longest time in ECW. You know, she was always holding cigarettes for him and shit. Then she, for a while, she went to WCW. She was like Kevin, Kevin Sullivan's, like, arm candy. Then... Chris Benoit, you know, had her as a manager. If you look her up, she was like a big staple in wrestling. She was like always in the Indies for a while, but she was she was mean. She was mean. she would get involved in a match, scratch your fucking eyes out, do all this shit, smack the shit out of you. Damn. I don't know where I was going with this, but if it was about something, uh, yeah, you're all yeah. Well, it's in theme, in theme yeah. with today's podcast. Yeah, just bouncing like around. bouncing around, all that shit. But it was like talking about Tommy Jr. But it's like, uh, so I had, he was talking about Walking Dead. I'm like, yeah, I, I can relate probably to Rick too a little bit, being a regular guy and getting put in extreme situations because I did eight years in the Marine Corps, dude. And he's like, oh shit, yeah, I just trumped you, bro. <laughs> Dick move. I'm gonna go to their work and then piss on them. How dare you? Man, I give them, I give them all the credit in the world, man. I, I, I'm, I'm envious of what they do. You know, they give, they give credit to what they give credit to us veterans. A lot of people do, you know, about us. You know, thank for your service and shit. All that. I'm like, damn, I serve more than I pretty much serve myself a lot of like large quantities of alcohol, like in cone heads, you know. But consuming <laughs> mass quantities, consuming mass quantities of alcohol, and then now later on in life, you got fucking GI problems. Um, but it's like uh, so yeah it is a dick move but, but sometimes I'm glad you you can admit that oh yeah that's the whole part of acceptance man that's how about yeah. moving on and having a better life you have acceptance and shit the actual show is really good they had like like a couple uh, what was it a couple battle royals and well one was it was a, it was just a pretty much like a six pack challenge for and it, but it wasn't a normal six pack challenge. It was like whoever got the pin first usually a six pack challenge. Now lately it's like six men elimination match, and they just keep on wrestling. But that that move they did once it was like a they had six people up, so two people on the freaking turnbuckle. When one tried to fucking try to power bone, the other guy just fucking they just did the fucking electric chair shit, and that shit was like I don't know how you can it's it's good it's to to do that kind of move and you see the sides of that ring which is yeah, not a yeah, normal yeah. size ring one guy was getting power bombed off the turban buckle and then I got a guy in a suplex and then the other guy had the other dude in a suplex and it was just insane <laughs> i was like holy shit <laughs> Yeah, man, and this is happening at like an indie wrestling event, mm-hmm. and then they had the the tag matches, and then they had their battle royal, and then and then they had a, a good a good match with Rob Van Dam and uh, yeah, that was a six band the ECW guys. Yeah, I don't remember what was it. Uh, Little Guido, Little Tommy Guido, Dreamer, and Tommy RBD Dreamer, against the uh, um, Low Street Hooligans. Low Street Hooligans, <laughs> and then, dude. And what about no, that? no, what is it? It was Mill City. Hooligans. Mill, Mill City Hooligans yeah, from Low, yeah. whatever. Yeah, they had a Low gimmick. It was. Great Great. <laughs> and they were booed out of the damn building. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were acting like heels, you know. And what about a little kid starting start shit with wrestles all the time? Yeah, no, we had it some... It was good. Well, I mean, the events like that are for them anyway. So, like, when adults get hammered and, like, do the shit kittens do, it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then you had another podcast there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These guys, they were... Uh, they were there. They were pushing their stuff. They were broadcasting live on Facebook. <laughs> they, were, they had video. Yeah, they were there. And then I guess what did they live? They must have, did they live broadcast the whole thing? No, I don't think they did. I think what they did is like put a lot of things uh, to to video and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, 
and then later they'll probably put on their shit and do voiceovers or whatever and do like videos and I don't know probably post this stuff yeah. but uh, it, it would have been funny if I, they, 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 they would have gave us like an honorary t-shirt they're like yeah we're gonna go blast you on our podcast now <laughs> <laughs> it seemed nice enough. Yeah, I don't know. They well, you were a- talking to one of the guys about he was actually a big, you know, comic book guy. Yeah, probably. no, he liked to talk at me about comic books. It was nice. Yeah, not totally. really at all. Yeah, I'm like, do you, re- <laughs> do you realize the superpowers this guy has right now? <laughs> this guy, <laughs> I'm like, you can't test him. Yeah, fucking no, comic I mean, book knowledge right now. I don't want to be like a snob, but like I've read lots and lots of books, and I I remember the comics because that's important to me for some reason. Mm-hmm. So, like, when somebody comes up and just starts talking at me about stuff, it's like, especially stuff I've already read. It's like someone... Like, ch- you can't get a word in. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I read that too. It was good. And then that's all they let you say? Yeah, yeah, no, this, that, and the other thing. They're, like, breaking it down. Yeah. He must like, be one of those guys that takes control of his podcast, too, with all his verbal fucking garbage. <laughs> well, who knows, man? It's not my place to shit on another podcast. I don't really even listen to my own, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I, well, you guys, you had one released about the Boston Think, Comic-Con. Today. Yeah, yeah, that was just came out pretty recently. But yeah, like, like thank goodness Andrew, like, totally just listens to everything that we do for quality control. Because mm-hmm. as soon as I'm done recording it, I'm done with it. Because basically, this, I'm, I'm glad I started doing this, too. You know, you know, me, it took a, a while for me to start even getting this together, you know, Scorpion. I had to... Have, Everything I wanted, yeah, so yeah. I needed to do. You had to, you had to buy the condo, and then you had to move put in, put stuff in the condo, and, and then, then you I needed move. to buy the equipment. But first, you had to learn what you needed to do the stuff while first. living in my condo. <laughs> Yeah, and then you gotta pay the electric bill in my condo. Yeah. Hey, can we, can we do it like get like we can start? You should do that like in the condo. Like, how you doing? Well, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and then you named it the Scorpions Den. So well, I say the Scorpion Den. Yeah, the Scorpion Den yeah. on 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 Scorpion Den. Scorpion Den straight out of Taunton. And straight out of this crazy motherfucker named Scorpion. <laughs> Eaten, eaten but it's like we, we it's like a learning curve too that what I'm doing like we're both learning from each other and that's why we always give each other input and that's what makes the brand better you know for both of us because I'm not fully away from I'm not going to be fully I'm never going to be away from the Vision Geek area I'm always going to be there with Vision Geek but it's like me it's like on my shit like you have certain criteria that you want on your stuff on my stuff the Scorpion is pretty much like fuck you I'm going to say what the fuck I want I don't care I'll drop that bombs all day shit bombs motherfuckers all that shit I try to keep Vigilant Geek PG-13, but, like, yeah. Like, fuck <laughs> that shit. Yo, fuck that. It, it usually doesn't work. No, nah, because you always have loud mouths like me coming on your show, you know, dropping F-bombs. Yeah, I think pretty much every guest we've had on the show swears. <laughs> and, like, brutally so. And now we just do it, too. Actually, I don't know. It keeps it fresh. See, it's... I don't know. I've only listened to a handful of episodes, so I'm not like completely conscious of how many swears I'm, I'm using. We should have a swear cone and go ding, 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 ding on your, on your fucking, like, I don't know how to do that shit. Hey, if anybody, you people know how to figure that shit out, you can help us out. I'll give you credit for it. For real. You're like an app that, like, hears the sound of your voice and then takes account every time it thinks it hears you say something. Yeah, we should keep that to ourselves. Maybe we should have come up with that. <laughs> Fuck it. Steal my idea. I don't give a shit. Yeah, motherfuckers. But uh, that, that show was good. Um, after a while, it's, it's, I just love shows like that. And, and I can't wait. I always want to do more. And in the past two years, it's like when you're growing up and you've seen, I can't wait to meet these people and all that kind of stuff. It's like kind of like my little, you know, adolescent dream that I've always wanted to live. I'm very fortunate what I had to go through now. It's like, it, it, it's a process. You know, it's like what I had to do to get this done. Like this, this, part of this office and well slash studio that that I've made so far it's pretty much where I want it to be not exactly where I want it to be but it's a, it's a process but fuck it you know fucking we all have leaps and bounds gonna do gonna do we have to have our other kind of stuff I appreciate people that does that support us though you know and anyone that supports me as well you know I'm asking we had a couple of people asking when you're gonna have your own thing when you're gonna do this I'm like well I really don't want my own thing right now but it's like I'm pretty comfortable with what I was doing but at least being part of the Vision League podcast, I can, um, it helped me break out of that, you know, shell a little bit because it's always scary. It's always kind of nerve wracking when you want to put your voice out there on live. Yeah. Well, it's also like, here's another fact doing podcasts by yourself is insane. There's only like a handful of people capable of that. 
Yeah, I need feedback. That's what I need. Yeah, you need a, somebody to bounce stuff off of. Especially if you get stuck on something, you don't want no, you don't want any fucking dead air. You're like, oh, what are we thinking about? What? Oh, <laughs> somebody look at the notes. Get the notes. Oh, what's it say? I don't know. I doodled over the notes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be a lot more. I can't wait till we all we we're we're thinking about dabbling into you know go Google Play. Well, yeah. Well, you know, you're real interested in doing the game streaming, which you should be ready to go. What November fifth? That's when the damn game comes out, right? Oh yeah, which is kind of ironic because November fifth is actually the day I actually entered recruit training. Oh yeah, big yep. anniversary, huh? Oh yeah, I got a bunch of birthdays coming up. My actual birthday, which is next month. I should get an Amazon wish list, buy something for me, send it to my house. Is that how that works? Yeah, man. People do that shit all the fucking time, man. Get an Amazon wish list. You, they don't, don't you add us because you don't want people stalking you and shit, you know? They send you like fucking like hot. I don't know if you can send food, but I know people that do it. I'm like, shit, bomb, pimp me some shit. No, maybe I should just set one up and be like, hey, family, look at this. Yeah, all buy right. buy one of these things. Preferably this Joker statue that costs about $300. <laughs> Man, I don't even, like, even if I were to pick up something like that, I don't even think I have any room in my place. Like, the pop vinyls have, like, completely taken over an entire shelf in my in my basement. And you got a bigger shelf than I do. And fucking, mine's not, mine may look like I have a lot, but I don't. As compared to yours, it ain't shit. Well, yeah, I have some that aren't even, like, like showing. It's, yeah. I got a problem, like, I want my basement to be functional, but I also need a place to put stuff. Yeah, that's a that's a dilemma. Yeah, so like I don't know, it's hard decorating, I guess. That's only downfall. That's only downfall about. Plus, I have like this place all to myself, and this place ain't never changing. This is always gonna be my fucking man cave. Well, you're gonna rearrange it a couple times. You're gonna want to do that. Change color, all that shit. Now you're like, I'm glad I put that in here, the heavy bag, because I can't put that anywhere else. Even not even downstairs in the basement. It's fucked up. Uh. Yeah? Why do they... They're just like, hey, you can't put stuff like that down there, or no? They don't have the clearance. Uh, oh, it's too tall. Yeah. Well, whatever. This is as good a place for it as any. Yeah, it's good to have a, school, a den when you're beating shit out of a bag. Yeah, so we're back. Um, we had to take a little break. A little mental break. Well, you were just talking about how you're hitting the bag. Yeah, I used to do that once in a while where I... um, It's good to get off either... It's good for your cardio, though. You know, I do that often. It's um, something I wanted to pick up, but now I just don't even have any room at my place for it. Yeah. And it's like, I, it's, I get, I don't, like, I was a member of a gym, like, even two gyms at one time. And it's like, I don't really, like, work around freaking people. Because I'd rather do my own thing. Because then you have those typical, you know, wait, uh, gym people that go there, the, the grunter. That's, like, fucking, like, always like, Ugh! You know that motherfucker? Yeah. You ever seen those people in the gyms? No, nah, I don't usually occupy gyms very often. Or you get the squatters that sit on fucking machines all day and you're trying to use that fucking machine and they're just sitting there moaning their asses on the machine. You know, like, can I work on that shit real quick? They're like, oh yeah, sorry. Fucking listen to their stupid shit. I think you have a Pokemon park in that too. What? You mean they got like a spawn point? Oh no, I had a... Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Nathan, Nathan came over, and I guess he found Pokemon in my house. Poke, a, Pokemon was in Tinsboro. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a spawn point in my freaking townhouse. Oh, shit. So, yeah, he caught uh, a Venonat, I guess. So I, I have Venonats. It's an infestation. <laughs> Man, I don't know what I'm going to do. What else did he catch? I think he got caught like a Spearow or like a Pidgey or something. I mean, I, I I downloaded that, but I even stopped. They, I got the free ones you get, so you're just sitting on your ass. And yeah, then I, well, then that's I find the one everybody uses. Not everybody buys like the pokeballs and like and spends money within the game. Uh, I don't Call of Duty, but uh, but it's like once I finally had to get off my ass and move around. Nope, I deleted that shit real quick. Yeah, well, I wanted uh, yeah, I want access to all the Google accounts. I guess they've changed it since then. Mm. But, uh... I can never get in games like that, even though I'm playing this game called Best Fiends, because my girlfriend turned me on to it, and you have to build up these monsters, and you go after these things that look like big slugs, and they either throw out teeth in your way, or they send out these little chompers that eat up a shit. 
it pisses you off. I I probably dropped about eighty bucks on that game so far. Yeah. Because I don't I don't want to keep on retrying. I used to play Clash of Clans, and then it was Boom Beach for a while, and then and then now I'm not doing either of those. No, I'd rather play console games. No, that's pretty much what I do. Like those games are great if like you you got a great like you got a job and you can totally sham at your job. But like, meh, why? There's like a lot of better games. There's actually old school games on there. Like I have Chrono Trigger on my phone. Holy shit! Yeah, Chrono <laughs> Trigger is freaking awesome. I, I just got to a certain point though, and I just couldn't deal anymore. But speaking of console games, was coming up in a couple months. Is a remastered version of Call of Duty: Modern Warfare. Yeah. See, th- those are the days when I had fun playing that game because now it's like on PS PS4, you have the like the little party chats. No one's gonna be in a lobby. You know, the whole part of being playing that game back in the day was just talking shit. Yeah, all but the time. I mean, everyone f- forgot that you'd be talking shit to your own team. It's like <laughs> self destructive and dumb. Or when you played Search and Destroy, you could talk shit to the other person that died. Yeah, what happened to that one, Team Killer? You fucking asshole. I used to play hardcore a lot. Yeah. I, that was like the main game when I played in Call of Duty because it was. Well, Modern Warfare was great. 4 was great. The best campaign. Uh, so great, far. Yeah, really good camp. Well, no, I thought the second one... Oh, actually, I thought the two campaigns in 2 and 3 were also really, really good. Well, there was it was like a trilogy they had. Yeah, they did. It was nice. <clears throat> and then, then they moved away from that. But, like, that was the first time they ever used modern weapons. Now they're just coming up with space stuff because people are tired of modern warfare. Yeah. They want, like, future warfare or, like... Yeah, I'm using this gun that has a pulsating electric pulse that was, like, the fucking, what they call it, the PO4 and, um... The current Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Oh, they're just making up stuff. I was like, what the hell is that? And they have an AK-47, but it's not an AK-47, it's a KN-44. Yeah. You can, if you get the variant pieces from the fucking store, you can actually make it look like an actual AK-47. And I was, so I have yeah. that. But the fucking... The mechanics on that game, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'm old school. I like boots in the ground. I don't like this whole this fucking sky jumping bullshit jetpack wearing. They're trying to add different elements to first person shooters. I mean, I played all these <clears throat> games, but like, I never really get that into them. I suck so bad, dude. Especially when World of War came out, and I had the I always went in the tanks. They had that one motherfucker just spam me with fucking. They have that like the speed turret on. I don't know. <laughs> Competitive gaming like that just gets toxic, though. Like, you, if I ever end up playing for any extended period of time, I always end up just wicked piss. And oh, like, like rage quitting? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm famous for that shit when it comes to Call of Duty. I'm fucking world famous for that shit. If I ever actually do a game stream channel, it's going to be just videos of me swearing a bunch because I'm getting my ass handed to me by people. That's good. That's that, that's that's popular with people. They like those things. No, that's good because I'm not good at the game. So I can't do cool videos of me doing like headshots from across the map. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> oh, when like all these people do like the axe throw from across the map. Like how the fuck that happened? Uh, that used to be so cheap. It used to be much easier to get those knife kills, man. Or if you jumped up real high, you could throw the fucking grenade like fucking like a hundred yards. And I so, remember that, yeah. yeah. It's just depending on how high the arc was. And then all of a sudden you got like the arm of the freaking like world champion. And now they do it now where you can't use any oh, lethals no. until about two minutes into the fucking match. Almost, like you have to wait 20 seconds. You can't use this at the beginning of the round. Like that's some bullshit. I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? You can't throw lethal grenades in the beginning of a round anymore in Call of Duty. The oh, because they one. know, because everybody, yeah. They have, <laughs> yeah. And it'd be just one big spawn trap. <laughs> oh, that was people like, always just chuck it to spots where people are running new anyway. Who cares? It's part of the game. And I used to troll motherfuckers on uh, the first Black Ops when the first RCXD ever came out. Uh... And I used, to, I used to do that shit and team kill my fucking friends. The worst, the, the, the one of the, there's two funny stories I have from playing Call of Duty, and one of them was because I really sucked, and it was kind of fucked up because you know people used to troll me because you know I did I did eight years in the Marines, and then I come out and play this video game like man you're a Marine but you suck at this game I'm like you fucking idiot well no like it's different <laughs> different skills yeah it's different mechanics man and it's not like the same one you're like moving around with controller the other one's like you're actually wearing all the stuff and doing like room clearing exercises over and over and over and over again and that's why I kind of like I haven't played it in a while but I had I do still have Rainbow Six Siege and those are like um yeah, well, one of the things, you can actually plan the breach for your AI there, mm-hmm. so it kind of streamlines it, so, but I mean, 
You have to do dry runs of stuff. Like when, when the military does missions, they've freaking already practiced it out thirty times. Yeah, like fucking months least. and months and months. Everything, everything they do. Especially, in, especially in the Marines, dude. Even if you're not part of infantry, you're still doing mount training and all that kind of shit. Fucking weird, fucking shit. But it's like here's the one funny story we had. First, it started my warfare too, and. I kind of liked that one, but you remember the Afghan map, the real big map? It had the planes down in the middle of the, like, the desert and shit like that. No, I remember and that. You had the cave. You can go in there, and people used to just camp in the fucking cave or camp in one of those fucking pillboxes in the back. I the never map. had that game for myself. I just played it a shit ton when I was deployed. Oh. Uh. Yeah, but I remember that map. Yeah, they had the plane down there, and then yeah, there was a couple of them, actually. And then there was that valley and stuff. Yeah. Up, up, and- there we go. Yep, definitely remember that map. Actually, I think the airport was my favorite map. Oh, Terminal. Terminal? Is that yeah, what it was? They, they're bringing that back, too, but it's going to be part of uh, the Advanced Warfare. Uh, I forgot that there's a... <clears throat> the only reason I bought this game was for the remaster. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm probably, I'll am I'm probably will play the campaign of Advanced Warfare, but... I'll, oh, is it Advanced Warfare? It's Infinite Warfare or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like Infinitely Advanced Warfare. Yeah, pff, whatever. <clears throat> Wicked infinitely advanced, dude. It's so fuck. It's smart. It's so fucking smart, dude. So we're on Afghan, and the, my friend Tony was about <clears throat> one kill away from getting in his first tactical nuke. So my buddy Jared, he's like, "Oh man, back out, back out. He's gonna get a nuke." No, he's and then he's like, "Yeah, no, no. What the fuck? What the fuck, man? What the hell? I was gonna get a nuke." He's like, "You ain't gonna get shit. Shut the fuck up." So out of out of that, see now he was the antagonist of that bullshit. So now after Modern Warfare Two came out, was it actually or was it Black Ops Two? Right, that came out after what Black Ops? Yeah, Black Ops One. Right. So I pretty much sucked at Search and Destroy. I always hated playing that game mode, fucking because I was always the one getting killed. So I'm like, well, what's the fucking point of me playing? But anyway, and we it was on the match on the map launch, and I'm I'm sitting there and I'm. I'm the only one alive, so I'm, I'm like, it's five on one. I was like, shit. So I had a fucking RCXD. I found two guys. Boom, you're, you're dead. You know, okay, cool. Got fucking, I, I was getting chased by, I had boom, I had a guy in front of me. I shot him, and then the guy, I turned on one dude, and I shot him too, because we're playing hardcore, search and destroy. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the game stops. I was like, why the fuck did the game, this game stop? I go, I go, what the hell happened? And he's like, oh, man. Tony just fucked you, man. He just went... He said, yo, if you lose to this guy, if he ends up winning, he's like the worst playing Call of Duty. You might as well kill yourself. And so they all backed out, and I couldn't get on video because no one during the time, you can have that video player, you can upload it onto fucking... I would have uploaded that shit on YouTube. And I'm like, yo, I can believe this all the time. It was like the best fucking feeling I've had in my life. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I go, why the fuck would you do that to me? He's like, well, that's payback from Modern Warfare 2. I'm like, I wasn't responsible for that, you motherfucker. He's like, yeah, you were, you were laughing. So what, I can't laugh, asshole? <laughs> I can laugh all I want. I'm like, because the first thing people can't tell me what to do is what to do. No one can ever tell me what to do. I tell it to people all the time. I don't even listen to my own fucking mother. You know, she can, I can take her stuff for advice, but if she tells me what to do, I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then I join the Marine Corps. And I still only being told what to do. And I'm always getting, <laughs> I'm getting thrashed in fucking recruit training. And that's probably one thing I haven't really talked about, you know, and like especially on this on this podcast, but it'll probably be another thing. But people always want to um, always have that one question that they ask any veteran, like, "Why did you join?" Yeah, well, I mean, there's as many answers to that question for like people who actually enlisted. Yeah. Well, and I guess officers too. Although you're gonna be sick to want to do that. Yeah, go to college and then go to more college. <laughs> like, so fuck that. <laughs> do four years of college, still get all the debt, and then be an indentured servant to the United States government. Hey, we'll, we'll pay off your freaking student loans. But sign this 20-year contract. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess officers' lives get a little bit cushy once they get enough rank to go ahead and delegate everything. Oh, when it become field grade officers? Yeah. Well, my reason to join pretty much, uh, I don't know. I guess I had nothing else better to do. No, I'm kidding. Um, I actually backed out three times, man. Uh, when I first when I originally went to go talk to my recruiter, I, I saw my friend Joe talking to a couple Marines. I'm like, what are you guys doing here? I mean, recruit people? 
He said, yeah, what's your name? I'm like, what do you know my name for? I don't graduate for another year. He's like, well, we've been looking for you. I'm like, bullshit. You don't know me. He's like, oh, we're going to love having you sign up. Why? Because you're a smart ass. Yeah? I'm like, fuck that. Because I was such a, I, I got in trouble day one. Like, by my senior general instructor. Yeah. When you know when you get your oh well, our situation was where we're in for, we're we're in some receiving platoon and we're we haven't met our drone soldiers yet, but the senior show up when we get our rifles issued to us, and fucking, and I'm sitting there writing down. He had me as a scribe writing down the, like the the rifle numbers next to recruits name and shit like that. So he, I was, so I was like, sir, are you this recruits uh, new drone instructor? He's like, no, I'm your senior drone instructor. And automatically, I thought to like. Gunnery Sergeant Hartman from fucking Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, everyone always watches the shit out of that movie. <laughs> and it's nothing like reality. So I was like, oh shit. I was like, sorry, sir. I didn't mean, I, this recruit didn't mean to say any of that shit. He's like, this, let me give you a little lesson. Black belt, senior. Green belt, drone instructor. All right, sir. <laughs> so I, I was always getting in trouble, as usual. And so, you know, when they, uh, they usually bring down the uh, third phase recruits from the other platoon from the other company that's over there that's ready to graduate. They have them do, like, the quarter deck, uh, what do they call it, the demo? <laughs> yeah, the, they did that in the Army, too. Oh, what do they call it? What they do go they call out, it? and then they say their names and stuff, and they just do, like, a buddy rush on a position. What do they call your area again? Yeah. Because you have a squad bay, right, in, in, in the Army boot camp, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, do they have an area where they have, like, a... We like lived a, in, like, this project a project? Well, it's kind of what it looked like. And they, it was these big, wide-open bays. There were about three per building. Wow. And, yeah. Yeah, we I, had that, too. Yeah, I was so a So, well, per one part was a battery, because it was in Fort Sill, and it's the home of the field artillery. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yes, we were... We were in... We were Alpha Battery, yeah. So, after they did the oh, little demonstration... Maybe we were Charlie Banner, but we were Dark Knight. Eh, fuck. So yeah, that, my memory's a skew right now. So, so after after they uh, we see people getting thrashed on the quarter deck, and all of a sudden they go, "All right, the first contestant that we want to come down, <laughs> recruit a rooter, get done, get your ass down here." <laughs> and you're happy about this shit, huh? No, because I was thrashed for a good twenty minutes, and I was like, "Oh shit." But that's pretty fucked up, you know. You keep on screwing up, screwing up, screwing up. Then they're like, okay, now we can fuck you up. Like you may, they always said to me, you may be dumb, but it'll make you strong. They always made, yeah, they did crazy. There's this one kid they uh, that snuck crackers out of the chow hall. So this happened in another battery, but like they found that shit out and they're like, oh okay, and then they just made him eat crackers and eat crackers and eat crackers. Binge and eating crackers and until, <laughs> until he just got sick and he just booted and he's fucking. Threw up a loaf of bread. <laughs> That's one way to go off crackers, man. Yeah, it was like, hey, you want some crackers? No, no, no. <laughs> what are those crackers doing in my house? Get them the fuck out. Yeah. No. I used to sneak shit, too. I fucking, I did, because you get, you get hungry in the middle of the night. You know, it's like if, you, if you're if you awake, especially a fire watch. Yeah, I never did. I'm, I'm like no good at getting away with stuff. Yeah, I was sneaky. But then I could be too sneaky, because then my rack was right next to the fucking duty... DI hut. Yeah. I was like, shit, they're gonna hit that wrapper open. And I always hated, I, I also didn't like like double ration recruits. I was always envious of them because they get a lot of good food. But then you had the. Yeah, the but then like most of them are struggling to put it all down. They're yeah. Skinny for a reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not that hungry. We'll make you hungry. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think uh, everything we talked about today is uh, we had a plethora, a potpourri. Type of thing. Oh, what they call those a cornucopia. A know? whole bunch of different stuff. Yeah, like a. What do they call that shit? I don't know anything is a cornucopia. Like a horn of plenty. A lot of variety. Yeah, variety. There's the word. Yeah, variety. That's it's a good word. Well, yeah, man. If we can, um, well, if this sets, if if uh, sets off, we get a good response from this. We will keep on doing this stuff. You know, we're talking about all the random shit. And uh, I'd like to say, hey. To my my buddy Sam Blair, because I know you're listening. How's it going, buddy? Uh, you want to give me shouts? Anybody holding? Not really. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. There's like we have a fan base, but I don't know who they are, and they won't like reveal themselves to me. So. Uh, 
They want to stay in kayfabe, huh? I don't even. I don't even know what that means for an audience to stay kayfabe. Makes some, makes some goddamn sense. Well, uh, is there anything you want to add before we sign off, brother? Uh, yeah, Vigilant Geek on YouTube. Um, this the Vigilant Geek or Vigilant Geek Media, I forget which one. And then uh, thevigilantgeek.blogspot.com. Uh, Andrew's been putting up a bunch of articles. They've been really good. Uh, most recently, he put up one uh, a scathing re- review against the critics about uh, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice. Oh, and I read that, and he has some valid points. Oh yeah, no, excellent points. No, no, he's a he's a, amazing at the rant, and uh, yeah, between those two things, uh, you want to hit me up? I'll be on holding Jack Orm. That's my Twitter handle. I check it all the time. I just don't, I don't know, usually, and usually I'm just liking stuff. I follow a lot of people who uh, talk about the comic books industry and stuff, so that's my thing. And cool, and for me, I'm on uh, at Scorpio Marine on Twitter, Scorpio Marine on YouTube, uh, Scorpio Marine on Facebook. Uh, I don't care about Facebook, but if you want to check me out there, I usually post a lot of stuff there, but I'm usually on Twitter or YouTube. Yeah, Facebook's like the family barbecue of social media. Yeah, it's like, like you have friends that show up that don't, you yeah. don't really want to show up. And Twitter is like shouting in the middle of a crowded mall. <laughs> That's what that is. Hey! Oh, was it, what, they, what, they poke you in Facebook and they stalk you on Twitter? That's not how it is. Yeah, well, Twitter's based, the whole <laughs> business model is based on following and listening to the ideas of other human beings. And then we can take them as our own. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's trying to subsidize like people who might take it too far. I don't know. <laughs> I like Twitter, though. <laughs> yeah, Twitter's entertaining. I really like it. Again, people say all sorts of cool things. It's usually you know great for like news or whatever, whether you're into wrestling or, or sports or anything, really. It's like there's a niche on there for everything you're into. Well, on on that note, this has been a very special edition of the Scorpion Den. I am Vince Scorpion, here with Holden Orm. That is the Scorpion Den. We are out.